Radio Bypass. Bringing you rock and roll music that deserves to be heard. Discover new bands. Hear some old favorites on Radio Bypass. Hey, Rockers. We are back today with another great guest. Our guest today is lead vocalist that I first discovered, uh, a band that I first discovered back in 2019. They've captivated me ever since. Please welcome lead vocalist Landon Milburn from Goodbye June. Hey, Landon. Hey, thanks for having me, Ralph. I appreciate it, man. Hey, man. My pleasure. Uh, I am so happy to uh, have you here and be able to share your guys' story with our audience, uh, many of whom probably are familiar with Goodbye June, but in case they're not, I really wanted to make sure everybody knows who Goodbye June is because when I found you in 2019, I can't even remember if I saw some little blurb on the internet, I can't remember how your name even came into my knowledge, but whatever it was, I checked it out and I said, holy shit, this is great. <laughs> <laughs> and so I've been paying attention ever since. And I look for new music for you guys and everything you've done. And, and I know you had records before my discovery um, of Community Inn in 2019 as well, which I still have to go back and, and, and check that stuff out. But from Community Inn to the next record, to the brand new, just released recently record, Deep in the Trouble. Um, it, it's I've just seen a great progression. You guys just really musically have meant a lot to me. And uh, I thought it was really great that you come on and share your story because I think you have an interesting story how you guys even came together and you're a family band that is not brothers or sisters like many bands uh, have right. been. you're actually a band of cousins yeah we are uh you know we uh me and Brandon uh the oldest of all three of us which you know we typically don't talk about age we don't especially him he doesn't want his age getting out yeah, uh, you're but, all young. Yeah, we're all we're all really young. Just know that. <laughs> um, and uh, anyways, the oldest of us three cousins, me and Brandon, we had a band when I was like 15, 16. And Tyler was living in Indiana. We were in West Tennessee at the time. And we always wanted to uh, form a band with Tyler, but it, you know, just didn't line up. And, and, uh, Honestly, it was tragedy that really kind of made it happen in circumstance. Uh, Tyler was about to graduate college. He was getting close to graduating college, and his brother passed away in June of 05. And um, that's really what brought us together and, and created the name Goodbye June. Because um, he had passed in June, right? Yeah, he passed in June of 05, and uh, that we just wanted to uh, – Brandon actually came up with it and said the name, Goodbye June, and we were like, cool. We love it. It's like, a, you know, it's a memorial for Shane, his brother, and our cousin, and he was kind of like the leader, like the alpha guy of the group, you know? Mm -hmm. And so we wanted to, like, uh, memorialize him in a way. And so that's that's kind of where it happened. And we finally all started playing music together. We always wanted to. And that honestly, tragedy brought us three to get together. Really, it made it happen. Otherwise, I don't think it would have ever happened. You know, Tyler would have gone on to engineering school at IU. And, and I think I would have probably been a youth pastor or something. Who knows? Mm -hmm. Completely opposite. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> well, that's. That's. I'm glad you guys ended up on this path. Uh, although I'm sorry for the reasons that it brought you together, but right. but that's great. So so that happens. You guys come together, and you've been together ever since. Uh, mm -hmm. And I guess one of my questions is, um, yes, you know, the three of you, but I, you you do perform live, and I know um, I believe it's Brandon. Is it Brandon that? Uh, at least, uh, is listed as your bass player, I think, and your drummer. And few uh, well, uh, uh, I'm assuming so, you have some other somebody else for a live setting or something. Well, so me, Tyler, and Brandon are the the band, and uh, but then live we have a, a live drummer and bass player. But as far as recording goes, it could be a hodgepodge. I mean, the last record, me and Brandon played bass. Um, 
you know, it, it's all different scenarios pretty much with every record, really. Um, but basically, us three are the band, but live we hire in drummer, bass player to play live. Yeah. So, you know, that, we're, 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 typically, we're typically five to six pieces live. Gotcha. You know? Not just three. Yeah, we're not yeah. a three-piece band per se. We that's, are, uh, that's what I thought you were, you know. Yeah. When I was reading the credits, I'm like, well, this doesn't jive then. This can't be the way it is. Well, you know, it's just then. it's just like how it's always been, honestly. It's just, you know, we, we hired in studio musicians and then we take them out on the road. Uh, and and, and then those studio musicians happen to be our best friends. So it works out really well. <laughs> All right. So you guys come together in 2005, born out of this terrible tragedy. Start making music together. And as then, kids, yes. As Dumb kids. kids. Baby. <laughs> Dumb uh, kids. <laughs> and then somehow, in about seven years' time, I guess it was, um, I missed this record, but you had, your first record was in like 2012. Is that correct? Yeah, I, you're right. Yeah, it was put out in 2012, uh, which there's no proof of that too much. Uh, <laughs> Yes, I, I know this. <laughs> Nor the wild music flow was put out, and uh, that, and, and then you know uh, that was our first actual real record, and we put that out. It was on streaming, you know, whatever at the time, mm -hmm. uh, and available for like download. I think it was like 2012, and yeah, I mean, and then eventually, you know, we we make partnerships with a bigger label. And uh, they, you know, that kind of disappeared. So, gotcha. That's the game you play, uh, you know. But we signed with Interscope Records, and we yes. put out the record Magic Valley. Um, yeah, and then that is, one you had a. Um, is that the one that you had a song in that ended up in a video game? Maybe was, was that we had two video games actually. Two from that. <laughs> we had TV shows, video games, all the fun stuff. Um, we had a lot of good syncs. Uh, their, their their sync department worked really well for us, and luckily we had the music that people were looking for mm -hmm. in those certain moments, so it, it worked out good. Um, and so, yeah, we we got a lot of good syncs and a lot of good uh, fun stuff. You know that I'm a video game player myself, so I have both of those copies of those video games. Still, Need for Speed Two. Hot Pursuit and Madden NFL 2017, I believe. And uh, yeah, that was a big achievement for me. Nice. Like, that was almost as big as a Grammy because I'm a, such a video game nerd. <laughs> like, I'm like, this is pretty cool. You know? <laughs> I mean, honestly, when I was a kid, I, I listened to like when I played Tony Hawk, like pro skater, I grew up in a very strict like church like setting growing up i grew up pentecostal and um you weren't supposed to have long hair or you know facial hair as a guy right. and uh, i always wanted long hair i always wanted to be like you know i always wanted that and i remember playing tony hawk and, and i discovered uh for the first time ace of spades like that song came on and i was like this is awesome <laughs> like this is awesome <laughs> So I, I learned a lot of music through video games. So I'm a big video game guy. <laughs> yeah, well, then it's an extra honor that your music got selected. Absolutely. You know, I learned Motorhead through a video game. So, you know, it's an honor to, to figure that out, you know, and, and be on one. Now, each of those games, were they different songs or? They were different so, songs, yeah. They were. were they all on the Magic Valley record? They were, yeah. It was Oh No and um, Liberty Mother. Liberty Mother was on Hot Pursuit, uh, Need for Speed, Hot Pursuit. And then I think Oh No was on Madden 2017. Yeah. Got it. And that song also had some movement as a single too, right? You, you had some success with it outside of the video. It, run. it did. I think that's the highest we ever, we did as far as like, uh, like, charting and, and things like that i think it got up to like 21 20 on the active rock and and uh, we had a lot of uh, movement with that and um yeah but you know don't get me started on rock radio 
Yeah, well, we'll, we'll get there in just a bit. But let, <laughs> before we do that, uh, so that's 2017. Pretty good success for you guys. The follow-up is 2019, where I came into the picture, Community Inn. Freaking love the song Rolling Off My Tongue, by the way. Um, Thank you. But now that album, was that, did that do more than the prior, or did it do less than the prior? Uh, you know, I didn't know, that, I didn't know if that had any, you know, I, did, I couldn't find much information. Like, did that have any charting? Did that have any video well, games? I don't think there was, there was as much like sync stuff with that album or even the next, but both of those albums are the last two albums prior to the, this brand new one we released. Um, they both did significantly better in. Uh oh, you just cut out, buddy. The UK and Europe, oh, and compared to Magic Valley, as far as like, you know, sinks and stuff, commercials. We had a Budweiser commercial with Magic Valley, uh, but like the other two, the other two albums, they did really well in Europe, like very well with radio. And um, every time we went over there, I mean, it was it was a better response in Europe for sure. So it's it's two different demographics really mm -hmm. um and that's all pre-covid oh well no not all pre-covid but you know right it's kind of well yeah because the next album see where the night goes obviously was sort of post-covid even though i don't know if we're ever really out of covid completely but uh, yeah and that record too i loved step aside and uh was it breath breathing attack breath and attack breathing breathe attack. Breathe attack. yeah those were like probably my top two faves off of that record too. Um, and that seems to fit well, because this this podcast, um, we have a lot of folks in Europe that that listen to this, and they seem to embrace this kind of music from new artists even more so than our own country here does, it seems like. They seem a little more excited about it, perhaps, or a little more rabid about it, um, which I love. I think uh, they're just excited about music in general more than we are honestly yeah so let so let's so that's a good segue to what is wrong today why will radio not support new artists and new music from legacy artists i don't well, know let's, thoughts on that <laughs> well let's let's start with a positive note uh there is a a, a great radio station in uh columbus ohio that has always supported us, Q, QFM. And they um, they are technically a classic rock station. But what they started doing is playing new artists that fit their format, which nice. by the way, all those artists don't fit the active rock format, right? Mm -hmm. We don't get played on the syndicated rock stations and blah, blah, blah. So they started kind of like, hey, let's change it up a little bit, you know? So, for example, I mean, like, the concerts we do there, that it, it, it matters. It's like people show up and, like, the radio matters. It still matters. Like, it, any, sort of, any sort of media matters, right? Mm -hmm. This matters. Like, radio matters. And, like, there's no, like big time radio supporting new rock artists i feel like unless they're label backed and they're just getting money shoved down their throats right i have like i'm, I'm friends like here in nashville alone i'll give you this as an example and i'll tell this to everybody i interview with like we live in music city right right well i rarely hear any new bands on our rock station ever and i listen to it quite a bit Mm -hmm. just to see if they change up their game plan. It's basically a classic rock station. Right. Because if you're playing if you're playing stuff that's 20 plus years old, sorry, that's classic rock. At this point, it is. Sure. Nobody wants to admit the stuff they grew up listening to is now classic rock, but that's let's be honest, it is. You right. know? <laughs> so right. so if that's all they play and they're not giving new bands a chance, well, then you're kind of a shitty rock station, in my opinion. But yeah. 
that being said, the times they do play newer artists, they're actually some of my friends, and I'm friends with a lot of rock people. We have a lot of rock artists here in Nashville, and we're all we're all friends. Like we all know each other, mm-hmm. and they rarely play those people. And it's like it's crazy because some of my friends are selling out arenas. You know, it's like it's nuts. It's it's crazy. It is so. Nuts. But it's interesting to me, though, that a band like yours, even without that support, or a lot of it, I mean, you've had some, obviously, like you said, in, in Cincinnati, or uh, not Cincinnati, Columbus. Um, yeah. But you've been able to, you know, sustain yourselves and, and, and keep going and keep growing. So um, radio maybe isn't quite as important as it used to be. It would be nice if it was. Um, but it still is important. It's very important. Yeah. Yeah. It's not as important, obviously, because you have apps, you know, and you have kids with phones, but it still is important. Right. It's still drive, it still drives people to shows. I, I will say that. Gotcha. So, gotcha. Yeah. Well, thank you, uh, whoever in, in Ohio is uh, on the ball with playing well, new music. I hope that oh, dude, they're other great, man. program yeah. to listen. <laughs> they are they are the best i hope they see this i i should tweet this to them once you post it honestly yeah you should because <laughs> I love them. As, as an old x radio guy myself i would greatly appreciate them for doing that because there's just not enough of it um and, and i don't know why because yeah. you know, the, the the thought process seems to be that nobody cares about new music but um i just find that absolutely impossible to believe especially since the classic rock audiences, you know, obviously going to be more older folks like me, not as much young guys like you. But I mean, but I can't be the surprised how many young kids love it. it. Yeah, well, there's there's so many young kids that want it. Like, like it, it's all around this town, honestly, in Nashville. I mean, there's it like they want rock and roll. Like mm-hmm. they want. It. It's there. It's there. It's just not being put in front of their face like everything else, you know. Mm-hmm. You know, okay. it's not the, it's not the, it's not the major brand cereal. It's the off brand. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah. So it's just as good. No, I'm just kidding. Which is, it's made in the same factory, but it's just better. <laughs> no, I'm joking. Actually, that's a horrible representation. Honestly, let's not use that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, let's let's move on. Um, so let's talk about the brand new just released at the end of June. I don't know if you can see the words there too good, but deep into trouble. First of all, your logo too. I notice how you've got, you know, this as part of the logo, which I've I've always thought was kind of neat. Who came up with that idea? Uh the smiley face. Yes. So uh long story short, I've always signed my signature on anything with the smiley face always <laughs> never thought you know i just always did it always and tyler my cousin the lead guitarist of the band came up with that logo he's like landon you always do this he's like for some reason it just makes sense he's like i don't know why it just does and i'm like okay whatever and he came up with that before we even had the pictures and the, the album artwork or anything. We had the smiley face. That was it. And he's yeah. like, this is cool. He's like, you've always done it. Let's just use it. I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah, and I think it's good. So it's, we went with it, man. We just went I like the it. design of the letters of your, you know, of the band's name too. Yeah, yeah, you know. So that's. It really wasn't nothing special other than I've always done it and somebody else capitalized on it. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. All right. Well, the new record, um, this time around, you guys are, are independent contractors here. You're doing this on your own, this album. And um, I believe, if I remember, I think The Hard Way was the first single you had released in advance of the album, um, yep. which is Smoke and Track. Um, and then um maybe writing through was second maybe second, yeah um, you're right yep. which was also a great track um and then a song that um I, I told you a little bit how this made me feel but um a track called pile of bones um off the record once again sadly for your family 
um, tragedy struck. However, the song wasn't necessarily about that, but you put together a video that ties that in beautifully, um, even if that wasn't the original intention of the song. So I guess Pile of Bones for me um, is one of those rare songs in, from a songwriting perspective because when I listen to music, of course, I love all kinds of stuff. I love screaming guitars. I love some speed metal. I love all kinds of things. But I also love lyrics, um, which you have a lot of great lyrics in, in, in other songs, too. But and I and then I love the way just moods and changes happen in certain songs. And anyway, so there's a lot of stuff I like. But then there's certain songs that just as an entire package, lyrically, musically, how the song is structured, the arrangement, all of this stuff comes together into it and, and the emotion that's coming out of the players, the, both vocally and with fingers, um, where it just all comes together in a super special place. And I have a few songs like that. I, I think I told you before we started The Heart of the Matter from Don Henley is a song I put in that, you know, above category. Um, and pile of bones hits me the same way and your video i thought was so poignant um and i find it interesting that it wasn't directly written um about what occurred to bring that video together that i want you to share with people but please i'd love to know all about pile of bones what what started that song what was the song originally and how did it come to be where it is in the video yeah um, it's a long story. And we were actually, um, oddly enough, we were, we were writing with a really great artist, uh, at the time we were working with him doing just like, we were just kind of like doing like a, 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 uh, trying to figure out the next album basically. And, um, and we, and his name's Brendan Benson. He's in the Racketeers, which by the way, great band, obviously Jack White, Brendan Benson, great band. Right. And, and and like we were taking turns like going in and out of writing with him and we were just writing this other song to start it with um outside of his place and um tyler came up with it came up with this uh lyric lonely on this pile of bones built it for myself and then we started writing the verses and just kind of, we wrote it, we were writing it. I was writing from my own perspective. Tyler was writing it from his, of course. That's how we work as a band. I mean, you know, that's how you contribute. It doesn't really matter. That's why sometimes people are like, what does this song mean? It's like, I don't know. There's three different people <laughs> writing it, you know? Right. So it can be a little weird and convoluted. <laughs> it's whatever but, uh, it means to you. It, yeah, exactly. Yeah. It's always like interpret interpretive, you know? But uh yeah. But this song for me, it was very like loneliness. And um, <coughs> I think the overall message originally was just loneliness and regret. I think that's what we wrote the song about. And, and that was it. That was totally it. And um, we put the song together. And I remember in the studio, like it was uh, one of those songs, like you rarely experience like, emotion like true emotion like you always experience you all let me correct that you always experience emotion when you're recording an album but there's there's a few rare moments where you really get like emotional in the sense of tears mm -hmm. almost you mm -hmm. know and or not almost tears do come and <laughs> and and it was just one of those songs like every time we added something else like i added the piano track and then we added the cello and we just were all just like teary-eyed little babies you know just like this song's beautiful you know right and it's not like we're praise, we're not praising ourselves it's just it impacted us you know and we even had a cop that lives in berry hill here in nashville so it's a, it's a studio area here in nashville there's a lot of studios here like blackbird and smokestack where we recorded a bunch of other like great class a studios and mm -hmm. this cop he became friends with us and he stopped in and he listened to it he was tear he was crying he was literally crying listening to the song i'll never forget it and um 
and you know we we got the record done and we were you know it was just a song about regret loneliness whatever and then of course uh in late january we lost uncle david which is tyler's dad which by the way goodbye june was you know formed because of tyler's brother's passing in 05 so then uncle dave passed and um it, it just kind of you know at that moment obviously time stood still and we were just there for the family and blah 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 but but that happened this uh, year right right yeah that was this year that yeah. was the, early this year before we put the album out and mm -hmm. um i remember me and brandon talked briefly and this was just in us talking like wouldn't it be crazy if we filmed pile of bones at the house site and then that was pretty much it and then like a month later tyler came to us and it was ultimately he's you know it's his dad it's his he came to us we never said one thing about it because it's weird it's a weird concept he came to us and said guys i know this is weird <laughs> and he said but what if we filmed a pile of bones at the house and me and brandon looked at each other and we we're like it's meant to be like we already, we literally looked at him. We told him, we said, bro, we talked about this like three weeks ago or whatever it was. Right. And, and, it, and as weird as it is and as hard as it was, it was a very tough process shooting that music video there because uh, the song did take on a new meaning. You know, it did take on a new, uh, a new form really. Mm -hmm. and, I don't know uh, how you guys could have gotten through uh, shooting it because uh, I was thinking of that well, watch the video that I mean talk about emotional Jesus it was crazy because like before that we were there cleaning up helping clean up searching for stuff you know like, like mm -hmm. we were there the day after it happened obviously we were right there and we we uh, were searching the grounds and looking for stuff and looking for I, stuff I don't, think, you know? I don't think we mentioned for those that might not know this poor man's house blew up. Faulty propane yeah. tank, I guess. Yes. Yeah. His yeah. Pro yeah. propane heated home. Yep. Yeah. Yep. And he was uh, uh, basically just cooking dinner. He was by himself um, a month prior. Uh, it would have been Christmas time, and we would have lost about twenty family members. Wow. So uh, this could have been way worse, obviously. Right. And we would have lost Tyler and Brandon. I would have been the only member left of the band, honestly. Mm -hmm. so like me looking back on that it's it's a crazy story but anyways long story short i mean it just kind of it worked out in a weird dark way it worked out that we were able to film there and and, and uh, it just worked out and we got the blessing from aunt reva which is tyler's mom and she was cool with it and and we just we did it and you know it's just a very raw like piece of art you know it is indeed. And and I got to say to you, you know, thank you for doing that, uh, because I think that it was tough. <laughs> you know, that watches that um, it'll resonate with you if you've lost any loved one at any point in your life, regardless of the circumstances of how you lost them. The song, even though it may not have started out that way, um, it amazes me because, you know, it starts out just so quietly. Right. And then um, you guys do your thing. And then it builds a little, builds a little. And then, you know, you got kind of that screaming guitar toward the end for a short passage. And the way it, it hits me emotionally, I mean, it feels like the stages of grief. The right. disbelief that it happened, then perhaps some anger, perhaps this, perhaps that. You know, all the different feelings, everybody grieves a little differently, but all the different things that, you tend to go through when when you with the loss of a loved one um yeah. yeah and then anger for me usually that for me has been kind of my usually my lasting feeling like i'm still mad um and so that guitar at the end perfectly brings that pissed off vibe at the very end so it's like yeah. it's respectful it's somber and then that little explosion it just beautifully captures the emotions we go through at a time, you know, with something like that. And, and it's a beautiful way to view it. That's, yeah. I just thought it was just incredibly, incredibly, incredibly well done. And, and 
video aside, I mean, that, of course, take, gives it a whole new meaning. But even if you just do old fashioned, pop on your headphones, maybe close your eyes and just really take in a song and soak it in again. The, Which the, doesn't happen too much anymore. Doesn't happen. Too much. <laughs> but again, even just as a song without knowing perhaps anything about it, again, you feel you the your, your the guys that are playing the instruments, you feel soul, your voice, you feel emotion, like you 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 are not just singing, you're emoting, and there's a difference. And it just makes it a just it's just a powerful piece of music all the way through musically vocally um it just well just so well done just so well done thank you man that means a lot yeah no you're welcome and i guess that's you know enough of the sadder things about this record <laughs> A lot of this rocks. You also have some softer stuff as well. And there's a couple of tracks where you're singing a little bit differently than the others. You got a little bit of a different tone going on in your voice. Um, yeah. So, you know, when I first heard you with the first song, you know, kind of Bon Scottish, but also kind of just you too. Like, you know, that just, I didn't hear just one sound, but but definitely kind of that vibe a little bit. Um right. And then there's some softer stuff as well. And you're singing kind of in a different style. So I feel like you've got, you know, a lot of your classic rock influences that you may have grown up loving. And then enough of your own personality in there too, blending it all together, which is pretty cool. So I like, I like the way that you, that you sing, but I have wondered though, vocally, if you had to pick one guy as your main influence, who, who would you say singer wise in rock would be your number one? Uh, Tough question, isn't it? It's ridiculous. I, I don't. I well, because I don't have a, a vocal. I, I the obvious singers in rock are obvious. It, it's more the rest of my upbringing that forms what I think is me. So it's it's hard to pinpoint that down. So um, church music. It's Why? all. It's all of it, man. It's country. It's church. It's rock and roll. It's blues. I mean, dude, I. Uh, yeah, I don't know, man. I grew up like loving. I loved the oldies. I love, uh, you know, if I had like, oh man, this is I, I've I've said this before in an interview, but like it's not a rock, it's not a rock influence at all. But it's definitely low tone and control. It is Harry Connick Jr., man. That dude's got a low voice out of this world that, that doesn't get respected enough. But also... And it is smooth. It is smooth. It's smooth. It's smooth. But, I mean, honestly, like, rock, rock. You said rock. And I would say probably... Probably. Oh, man. It's, too, it's so tough. All right, I'm putting you on the spot. Oh, no. I get it. Well, I'm so, going to say. Well, I, I will say this: John Fogerty, Leon Russell, Robert Plant. Here's some John, okay, here's some John. Those three. Those three are my gods. So there you go. Right, there so, you go. So you pulled it out. You pulled it out. I pulled you the Holy Trinity of Landon: <laughs> Leon Russell, John Fogerty, Robert Plant. There you go. But then they all have their trinities. So you got of course a bunch of people behind them. <laughs> of course. Um, and then going back to um, songwriting, um, the song Hard Living, um, you've got a line in there, cursed out Jesus at the funeral home. Yeah. And that resonated with me, too, because I've been there. Um, yeah. and, and I was curious, you know, is that a real experience for you? So so that so, so us three members write everything. And that song was actually Brandon's. Um, my cousin Brandon, he wrote that song predominantly. We all, like, when somebody brings an idea, we all chip in and help with lyrics or music or whatever. But he specifically wrote those lyrics. And so that is his story. And I will say that is true. Yes. 
<laughs> Got you. I, I and, love and, and, and besides his story, I've done it too as well. So yes, <laughs> I think he's speaking to more people than what he realized. I just don't think people admit it. <laughs> you know, I don't yeah. think people like to admit that they cursed out <laughs> Jesus or whatever. You know. <laughs> yep, I hear you. Well, Brandon, if you watch this, Brandon, great job on the lyrics because I like all the lyrics, but oh. that thing in particular stuck out to me. So I'll, I'll make him watch it. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, so that's that. That's another song that I love from the record, "The Hard Way." First thing I heard from it, freaking awesome. Um, but I believe now we're. As we speak today, this isn't out yet. It will be out by the time I edit this all together and put this out in a few days. You're having a new video releasing tomorrow. Uh, for which song from the new record? Uh, no, Heart's Still In It, which is uh, uh, a song that Tyler wrote. Um, <coughs> he, came, he came to me and Brandon as we were recording the record. And we had pretty much the whole record finished. And that was the last song to be added, I believe. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah, take me. a sip of water if you have any there. Right? No, I, I don't. I should. Um, but anyways, um, yeah, it was uh, basically we were in the studio and Tyler showed us that song. And um, and we were like, yes, this is great. And, and then we kind of tweaked it. He didn't have the... Uh, very ending and i kind of nudged him on that i was like hey go here at the very end uh but other than that i mean it was that was tyler like again when we bring songs we basically the other two just kind of bully the other one that brought it until they make it perfect you know <laughs> <laughs> that's basically what it is <laughs> we bully each other <laughs> you're cousins but you're, you're like brothers <laughs> oh yeah you know you can't really fight it when you got two people barking at you you know right so we all we all put up with each other so well i'm glad you do i i think you guys are just like i said just a great band um sorry that it was born out of tragedy but um but you, you certainly took major lemons and made major lemonade because you got a great band here um Thank you. And I hope you guys keep at it for a long time to come and keep making new records, even though I know it's a singles world. A lot of guys say nowadays, I'm still glad for a full record because, again, you've got a lot of different textures here. There's a lot of things going on in this record. And right. if you're just a heavy metal, hard rock guy, like I mostly am, but I appreciate some other things as well, um, you, it's here. If you don't like stuff that's super heavy and you like it a little lighter, it's here. You know, you got we, you got we try great, to appease everybody, man. Yeah, you really do, man. You got a great we like to give we like to give you the head banging stuff and we like to make you cry. <laughs> you <laughs> succeed, you succeed. Tears of joy though at at the and, and some joy. The, There's a little Roy Orbison, you know, uh whatever in there. <laughs> Yeah, no, you guys are an interesting band. You definitely have your own sound, um, which is really cool. I mean, that, that that's something, too. Sometimes newer bands haven't developed their own personalities enough yet in their music when they're young. It uh, takes a while. Um, so they only maybe sound like their influences, where you guys have the whole thing. You've got your influences that are there, and you can hear them. But it's also you can tell, oh, that's good by June. Once you're familiar with with the music, like like I have been, um, and all of you guys watching this, if you're not familiar with these guys, you need to be. Which I guess before we wrap up is is a question too. If somebody's just discovering Goodbye June for the first time, how would you describe your your band, your music? We're horrible. <laughs> <laughs> well, besides the fact that you suck, how else would you describe it? <laughs> uh, you know what? We're we're not we're not your radio band. We're 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 your uh, we're your classic rock mixed with a little modern flair, and and we're we're us. We're southern. We're we're but we're also you know universal. I think we're just trying to. I think we're just trying to write how we feel in that moment and and not really pigeon we've never we've never pigeonholed ourselves into a movement just because it made us money i'll tell you that because mm -hmm. trust me we've had the opportunity to do that 
And we've never been that band. We've just always done what we felt was right for us. Mm -hmm. And we never really cared about anything other than putting out what we wanted to. So right. that's what we are. That's that's the type of band we are. We're a, we're a true music do-it-yourself band. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And I would say authentic. Authentic rock and roll for sure. Thank you. I wouldn't say that, but if you say it, I'll accept it. I, I'm feeling it, man. I'm feeling it. <laughs> and you got rhyming names in the band. I mean, come on, how many bands can have a Landon and a Brandon? You know, right? Well, <laughs> you know, I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, if again, if you want to learn more about these guys, uh, they do have a website. Good, I think it was just goodbyejune.com is a website. Yep. They're on social media. You need to follow these guys, support them. Buy, buy physical still is great. You know, if you want to get downloads, go ahead. But physical is cool. Physical's um, great. We got CDs, vinyls, uh, all cool shirts, things. cool shirts. Yep, that's right. Uh, but you know, it takes a village to support a rock band. So support these Amen. guys um, because they're writing real music from the heart and soul. You can hear it; it's evident, and it's really, really special what you guys have created. And especially on the new record, um, you just keep getting better each release. Um, so goodbye, June. Check them out. And now I guess we'll wrap things up and let the music do the talking. Um, so since the new video that'll have just come out when uh, when this when this interview comes out, um, we'll start out with heart still in it. That's with a question mark. Heart still in it. Um, That's right. So we'll, we'll we'll feature that song. Um, we've got to play pile of bones just because it's one of my masterpiece songs in my opinion that's been written um and then i need you to pick a track and it can be any it can be from the new record it can be from the ones that i have magic valley community in see where the night goes anything you want tell me a song to add to this interview talking about me talking about you i want you to pick talking about one. me well my god i think Probably pick any, pick any song as long as I have it. So it can't, be, it can't be from Nor the Wild Music Flow because I don't have. Well, it. No, it <laughs> I, I tell you what. I tell you what. One of one. Of, I think. I think what everybody needs to hear right now is something, just like open minded. So I would say Free Child off of Community In. Mm. I think that might be the ah. one. Hold well, on, Free Child. Yep, off Community In. Perfect. And that's and that and that's a full a perfect round circle because that's where I first became aware of you was that record. So that's that's why I also chose a song off that album. <laughs> that was Good, choice. Well. <laughs> Good choice. All right, everybody. We've been talking to Landon Milburn from Goodbye June. Awesome band. Please get their new album. Trust me, you will love it. Um, you got some dates coming up in August across the Midwest. Uh, hopefully more will get added and we'll get you out west as well. Um, and just please check out Goodbye June. And right now, check out, okay, what did I say we're going to start with? We're going to start with the new video that they will have just released when this comes out. So this is Heart Still In It from Goodbye June. And then don't go anywhere because you're going to hear two more killer tracks from a killer band. Thanks again, Landon. Thank you, man. Appreciate you, Ralph. <laughs>
smile upon their swords Every time you take the stage You leave them wanting more That's how I know That your heart's still in it
the spiral road Take me far from home Moving out of town where I won't be around Flying for a reason Where does all the time go? Have you seen my